Okay, so we're going to add Cm minus. No, this is what I'm adding. The, oh, oh, yeah, but with the... Oh, the control lines. Yeah, I'll always add it to the one I'm holding up. Oh, that was so cute. So those, <laughs> ones, those ones aren't doing anything right now. But. Okay. Um, it is kind of cool if you watch as close as you can. You can literally see it, like, start to change as soon as it hits. And you see, like, a little flash of blue. But then it's not there yet, so then it goes back. And then as it kind of shifts, you can sometimes even see, like, See, so we're not the original pink anymore, so it kind of goes into like this intermediate. It's more like purple. Yeah, yeah, like kind of in between the two, right? And if I just keep adding, we can make it go all the way. Ooh. Right, blue? Oh, that's blue, oh, right? That's good blue. That is a good blue. That's a better blue than my other blue. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't want to some blue with your blue. <laughs> Okay, very good. All right, next one, we're going to add some H2O. Don't say it out loud. Point with your finger which way you predict it will shift. So if I add H2O to this reaction, which way is it going to go? So H2O is here. If I add it to this side, it needs to rebalance, like Brian said, and shift to the other side. So if you're pointing, to the wall, have another smiley, so we're correct. Okay, we'll walk through one more piece by piece, and then as long as we see everyone's getting it, we'll go a little faster. But, okay, show me on your finger what's gonna happen to this amount when I add H2O. Is it gonna increase or decrease? Very good, it will increase. What about the CL minus, what it's gonna do? Also increase, good. And then, OCO4, what's that one going to do? Very good, decrease, and then this is our chance. Okay, awesome. Okay, so obviously we know, so what color should it change? Pink. Pink. Right, so we're going to take the one we just turned blue. Just add it. Yeah, let's try it from like the right. Changes at the top and not at the bottom. <coughs> Bounce it a little bit. Oh, that's yeah. cool. You're basically just like. Uh, yeah. One gray. It's a gray. Yeah, it has like a nice little like ombre. Oh, yeah, effect. I was gonna say ombre. Is that pink? Oh, what? Oh, it's purple. It's still purple at the bottom. That is so freaking cool. Can you really? Yeah, the bottom is. I like that reacts more than the pink and the blue. That was cool. <coughs> And we're back to pink. Yay! That's, That's an actual pink. And now it's a good pink. Okay, next one, what we're going to do is we're going to remove CL minus. Wait, so is this like the natural colors of the substances? Like, yeah. you didn't add blue or pink? No, no, so there's no food coloring here. Oh, I thought you did for a second. I was like, no, that's what just what, that? like, cobalt chloride Whoa. is just naturally. Oh, that's so cool. I was like, naturally. how the heck is the food coloring doing that? <laughs> that helps yeah. you. That makes more sense. No, you're good. Okay, so if I remove CL minus, show me with your finger which way is it going to shift. Good. If you're pointing to the wall again, have another smiley face. You are correct. Very good. Um, so let's go through these really quick. Now, notice the pattern, right? In both of these reactions, they're both shifting the same way which is going to cause the same individual results. Whenever you shift towards something, those things increase. When you shift away from something, those things always decrease as a result. Yeah? So, in, not like the temperature ones, but adding and removing the specific things, is it always going to be one's going one direction and the two others are going the opposite direction? Yep. Yep, it will always be where... Like the 
the reactants will all behave the same way in a sense, and the products will behave the same way. So, yeah, great way of looking at it. Um, before I do it, any thoughts? How do I remove, any thoughts on how I remove just Cl minus from this reaction? Oh, I know what it is. <laughs> a smart filter. A smart filter. If you, there was one for sure, right? Because that's the trick, right? If you want to remove this, but it's not like I can just pipette some out because it's going to take another thing with it. We just saw the density thing. Yeah. So maybe something with density. Any other guesses? So, so often what we do is to remove something from a solution. So right now this is an aqueous thing. What does it mean to be aqueous? It's dissolved in the water, right? Yeah. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add something to it that will bond to this and become a solid. And so that way, it's not in the solution anymore. So you're going to actually see two things when I do this. One, what color is it going to shift? Right, it's going to shift to the pink, but then you're also going to see it become cloudy because the cloudiness is that solid substance formed, which then I can easily filter out. Um, because it's a solid. So. Like it's like dust? Yeah, solid? yeah, it's gonna look like dust, and then if we let it sit, like I don't touch it, it will all fall to the bottom. And so, but in the beginning, it just looks like dust spread out everywhere. So, okay, so the substance I'm using is silver nitrate because the silver bonds and how we use to the chlorine. That that yeah, that's what we use to make the, make our silver. Extract our more. silver, yes, good catch. floating a little bit. So that, I'll bring it around closer. So the white stuff at the top, that's your precipitant. And you can see right underneath the white, do you see it starting to turn pink? You see like a slight line of pink there? There you go, people at home. Um, kind of looks like chunky milk. <laughs> Almost, yeah. A little bit. Okay, so you can see it's starting to fall. You yeah. see that falling right there? All right, so then I'm going to add more, and then that will get it to shift a little. People in the back, did you see it? Okay. It's like slightly the pink at the top, and then there's the precipitate at the bottom. So then we'll add more to get it shipped all the way to our reactant side. <coughs> Yeah. If it doesn't turn full pink, you're like, I don't believe it. If I mix it. Yeah, it is a very Go down. But it's pretty though, isn't it? It is kind of like a snow globe, huh? Okay, I'm going to leave that there and then you'll see our precipitate eventually settle down. Okay, questions so far? So far you guys are doing great with your predictions, so that's pretty exciting. Okay, what are we gonna do? Heat it up next? Okay, show me with your finger if I heat this reaction up, which way is it going to shift? Point with your finger for the next one. If I heat it up, if I add heat, which way is it gonna go? That's what I had on my thing. Good, if you're pointing to the window, now, the key thing with determining heat, everybody, is treat it just like the balancing of before. The biggest thing is you have to pay attention to where is the heat. So in this particular reaction, where is the heat at? What it's on the left side. Good, it's over here. It's a reactant. So would this reaction be classified as endothermic or exothermic? Endothermic. Good, so this is an endothermic reaction. So the heat is here, so if I add more of it, to 
that one's out, I have to go to the other side because now the reactant has too much, so it pushes it to the products. So in this case, since I'm going away from the reactants, you should have that the reactants go down and the products go up. So one way to shift an endothermic reaction is by heating it up and you can force more of it to become product. Okay, okay so we're gonna add this. So I have a little hot water bath here. Oh yeah. So normally when you heat things up, it's best to do it through like okay, it, bath formation. Wouldn't if you added some hot water, wouldn't it then do like oh. add Yeah, because since this one has water in it, it like Obviously, you can see it's not as instant, right, as our like adding of something. Like it doesn't instantly turn blue because obviously it takes a minute to heat up. I'm gonna grab. I need to grab something to pull it out without fingers. Um, so I'll leave it in there so we can hopefully get it. Equilibrium part, like, are we gonna watch it like change from blue to pink and blue to pink, like all by itself, or is that? So it is at an equilibrium already. Yeah. Yeah, just at the molecular level where we can't see it. The reason why it's one color over the other is because of the stress. Like the ratio, in which one is more favored, I guess you could kind of think of it as. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is actually already changing, like. So every time, so these are changing into these, those are changing into those, but if there's more of these overall, it just stays pink. Or if there's more of these overall, then it just stays blue. Yeah. But that process of it always changing, it, it's happening right now. We just can't see it with our eyes. So yeah, great question or comment. Other questions or things? Wait, so as it's transforming like colors, yeah. it's basically reaching its equilibrium as it's balancing out? Yes. Okay. So even though we think of it as, at least is how I think of it when I saw these problems, I'm like, okay, so we have our balance, okay, the stress happens, and then it shifts. In real life, it's like almost instantaneous. As soon as that stress is added, it's adjusting, right? It's not like, oh, we see it this and then it go there. It just, they fix themselves pretty quick. So, yeah, good question or comment. Okay, before I teach you, so the last thing we're gonna look at today is how to graph these equilibrium systems. Now I'll tell you this right now, that graphing them is not something you will see on the quiz, but it can be, it's a really great way of understanding this process of change. So it's pretty much more practice with this, but just in a different type of look. 
Um, before we do that though, everyone go to your I Can page for me, which is on the front of your assignment packet. And I just want you to do a quick evaluation on how you're feeling with this I Can. And I'm just gonna kind of walk around and glance at it. So flip to your I Can. Uh, the third one is the one about Lee Chatelier's principle. You should have already marked, marked up 8.1 if you haven't. Um, but today's is 8.3. So just put a little check mark next to how you're feeling on 8.3 in terms of like, I need more help with this or I think I've got it. And then today I'll kind of walk around and see where you marked yourself as we're working so that if you need help, we can give you the help you need. So, okay. Um, kind of timeline, how we're looking, just so you know. So next time we'll be doing a lab um, where you guys will have a reaction that you'll be shifting. The one you'll do in the lab is a blue to green shift. It's another cool color change. Um, and then we'll do a little bit of application side of it, of talking about some real life equilibriums like that actually influence our everyday life besides just cool color changes. Or like, I used this as my gender reveal when I had my first child. Because <laughs> it's pink or blue, right? Um, so, I know, luckily I convinced my husband to do it. So, like, really? We're gonna be science? But yes, we did. Um, it's cool. So, um, and then, so our quiz for this unit is gonna be right after the weekend. I think it'll, because we have Mondays off, so Wednesday is the day of your quiz. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind as you're looking over your eye cans. If there's things you're so confused about, um, yeah, let me know. There is one more paper just, you know, in your packet that we may or may not do next time. I'm just going to kind of gauge it on how we're doing. It's just another thing with equilibrium. It's the one, it's called really dynamic equilibrium. So if you're like, I haven't done this yet, nobody has. And we may do it on Friday or we may not, just depending on how our understanding is going. So, okay. Oh, I'll pull it Do you see it's turned like a really nice blue now, right? Can you see that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. that's so cool. And then our one that's in the ice is like kind of the purple stage, right? Well, see if it stays there, if it gets more pink for us. So, okay, take your warm up, everybody, and flip it to the back. We're going to use this as a way to teach you about the graphene of equilibrium. Now, the thing that's important about these graphs when we make them, they're going to be the craziest looking graphs you've ever made and probably ever seen. Um, the key component of these graphs is focusing on the change, not so much the magnitude, meaning how high or how low you go isn't as important as are you going up or are you going down. Because we're not, you can get into actually the mathematical side of the numbers, and we do an AP chemistry. That's just not what we're going to be doing in here. Um, and so don't focus so much on like, well, how high do I go or how low do I go? But what we're looking at is do you understand the change that is happening? Okay? So what we're going to do is on our graph is we need a line for every substance in our reaction. So in this particular reaction, we have four things we need to put. I'm just going to put them, once again, this is where it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to put them in order they're written. Okay? I'm gonna do mine in four different colors, just, well actually, probably just two, I'll probably do the reactants one color and the products the other, just so you can see. Um, so make four lines, so, and label them. So our top line is gonna be CO, H2O6, the one under it's gonna be Cl minus, where's my blue red go? And then this one's gonna be CO, Cl4, Okay, so the first thing is just put all your substances on the graph. Once again, I could have put these up here and those down there and it'd still be fine. Because it's not so much about where they are but what they're going to do, okay? All right, so what does it mean? So before I did anything, this system is at equilibrium. What does it mean about concentrations when a system is at equilibrium? Mm. What are other concentrations doing? Uh, they're they're balanced. Well, not really balanced. They're not. So, like, if we're if we if we're on the ground, yeah. they would they would either go down and up and then go on a straight line. Perfect. Stay. 
Yeah, so once we get to equilibrium, they stabilize, right? Once again, what he's saying is they are not on top of each other. They could be, right? But it's more important. So take your lines, and we're going to start out by just making them flat to show, okay, we start out at equilibrium. Okay? Our x-axis represents the time as the process is happening, okay? So I'm going to put down here at the bottom, so now at this point in time, I'm going to label it just number one, so step one happened at that time. Step one was adding Cl minus. So first off, if I add Cl minus, what's going to happen to the concentration of Cl minus? It's going to go up. It's going to go up, right? So I'm going to add a spike to Cl minus because I added it, and that's the stress. Additions or removals are always spikes in the graph because it's very quick, right? I can very quickly add a whole bunch of Cl minus. Got it? Okay. Okay, now what we want to draw is what the system did in response to that stress. So when I added Cl minus, we said that the reaction is going to shift to the products, and so the concentration of this substance went down. Now the difference here is it's not a dr as drastic of a down because it's adjusting to the shift. So I'm going to draw a curved line down and then get back to a new equilibrium. Okay? All right, let's come to our blue lines and then we'll plot back to Cl minus. What's happening to the product when this stress was added? Good, so they're increasing in amounts. So it's going to be a gradual curve. Okay, now let's go back to our CL line because that needs to get back to equilibrium because that's what they do. So originally it spiked up because I added it. When the shift happens, what happens to CL minus? It actually is going to go back down. So the stress was I added it, but as it's shifting, it's going to use some of that stuff I added to get to the product side. So we're going to actually take this one and scoop it down. Now notice though, I don't go below my original amount, because mathematically that wouldn't make sense, because I literally added more. But it's going to use some of the stuff I added to get to a new place of equilibrium. Okay, questions so far? Once again, I know these are really exciting looking things. Okay, so let's do step two. So draw your next point of time. So at step two, what did we do? Good. So we added H2O, so that's the first thing you should do on your graph. Get spike up your H2O. Because in this case, it would be depending on how much water I added. So, okay. yeah. Okay, what happens to our products after that stress is applied? Good. They both go down. And hopefully, it's where you can see the patterns of how they behave in similar ways. So, this one's going to go down, that one's going to go down to our new equilibrium. Okay, third stress. What was the third thing we did? Oh, we removed Cl minus. So what would that look like if we draw our graph? Good, so spike the downward. 
But at this point in time, it took a bunch out. In response to that stress, what do the reactants do? Actually go up. And the products yeah, most people when they see these graphs they have no idea how to read them. But you guys will. So try to flash your screen. Okay, stress number four, everyone ready? Sorry, give me a second. So, gradually, our products have separated and our reactants have came close together in relation to the equilibrium. Uh -huh. Would that have any kind of different effect, or is that like, are they really getting farther apart and close together? Oh, or is like that in just terms us of right into it? Um, they could once again. The distance of them and their like numerical placement on the graph takes a little bit more work to know exactly, but that can totally be a thing. Yeah. So, okay. What was stress number four? Added heat. Added heat. So in this case, when it's a temperature situation, you're not going to have a spike on any of them because, as you could literally see, it wasn't a drastic change on any of them. So you just show the gradual shift overall. So we see that the reactants are decreasing and the products are increasing. So make your reactant lines go down and your product lines go up. The new equilibrium. on these graphs and how to interpret them and how to draw them. So the spike is always going to be the stress, correct? Perfect. Yep. If you see a spike, so like on your homework for this, the front page you're going to draw graphs, the back page is going to give you a graph and you're going to say what it's telling you. But yeah, so if you see a spike, you know that's because you added something. If you don't see any spike, then it's a temperature type shift. Yeah. Will there be any, um, like you said, when you draw the line below the original amount that spikes, so like when you add the line, yeah. can, it, can it like decrease? If you do it, the line past, like the original like, line, is that going to like be in that anything you want any further? Great question, Tanner. So in actuality, it would be wrong. But for our case, I'm focused more on the direction. So if by chance you weren't like paying super close attention and you made this line go down that way, I wouldn't dock you for it because you're showing me the understanding of like it's decreasing, which is what I want to see. So yeah, good question though. Okay, flip to your homework assignment really quick. That's like, I don't know, the one after the last times. Um, one of them we need to change because it talks about pressure and we are not dealing with pressure. So go to C. What should we do instead? Skip it. We'll skip it. Cross off C. AP chemistry has like three things to do every day and they get a problem off. That is a cool story, bro. Is it right here? I lost the hand. Okay, and then flip to the back side because the table at the bottom got a little cut off. So cross off part C. Just a little. And then the, I just to clarify. So on this one, so this is they're giving you a table with the graph already, 
and then you're kind of going backwards to say what's happening. The very last box that kind of got cut off is you're telling me what was the imposed stress. So what caused all that stuff to happen? So for example, I'll do the first one with you. So at time one, so everyone look at time one on the graph, what would be the imposed stress that happened? We added the, yeah, so that's what you'd put there. And that one I picked down because it's easy to tell because anytime you see a spike, that's obviously the stress. Real, real. So the that, very bottom, that's where you would just look at A and see, okay, what did A do at that time? Oh, so, so like in that case, you'd put a down arrow. So for B, do we write stress? Or would we write, impose, we'd write B for imposed stress? Yeah, write B for imposed stress. And up arrows on like And then up or down arrows, yeah. So questions on that for now? Okay, I'll let you get to work. Um, I'm going to let you keep, normally we turn in warm-ups, right? But I'm going to let you keep it since it was kind of like our notes today too. But if you'll just set it out on your desk, I'll come around and just check that you did it. I'm pretty sure we all did. But then I'll give you your points for that. Um, just on the front. Is that on pressure too? Oh, no, don't cross that C off. So what do you mean to cross off like no, just like steps. Because it taught you didn't deal with pressure stresses. Tutor theme. Okay. I normally don't like write that far over. 